Hello everyone welcome to my bold and beautiful now channel. As always, this time I have appeared with the mysterious soap opera. So don't delay like and subscribe now and stay tuned. At Forrester, Steffi tells Finn it's insane that Deacon thinks Sheila is alive. She does and watch how numerous toes the body had, it was Sheila, however, it should be me. Steffi heard the paramedics call her time of death, if anyone knows that. Finn recaps that Deacon thinks he saw ten toes. Steffi says it's insolvable. He's either lying or it's wishful thinking. It was surely Sheila. Steffi C.A. and believe Deacon is doing this. Finn reminds her the whole agony can be over. Steffi says it's seared into her brain. Cleric needs to get a grip. She's going to defy him. Once he can get it through his thick cranium that Sheila's dead, he LL be better off. We LL all be better off. At I.L. Giardino, Deacon reads the dispatches from Sheila to Sugar, telling her to stay down from her. He pours himself a stiff drink and continues to study his laptop. Perhaps Finn's right. Perhaps I am losing it. He flashes to the scene in the crematorium. Piggies in a mask underneath the distance. Sheila had nine toes, but I saw ten on those bases. He decides, yeah, Yuri's surely losing it, and takes another drink. Deacon muses, why Sheila? Why did you go to Steffi's that night? And who the hell is Sugar? In the Forrester design office, Carter demands to know what exactly Zend and Luna did the night of Eric's marriage. Zend confesses, Luna and I slept together. Zend explains that commodity happened to Luna tonight that explains why she was in his bed. Neither of them anticipated it to be. He has passions for her but no way would have acted on them if he'd known how important Luna loves RJ. Carter is confused, however, and he didn't want this, how did they end up sleeping together? If she didn't want this. Zend explains Poppy's special mints getting mixed up with Luna's regular mints. Every time Luna allowed. She was taking a regular mint Carter interjects, she was remedying herself and that's why she allowed. She made love to RJ. Zend knows how crazy it sounds. Carter asks if he's sure it happened that way. Zend box, you suppose I am lying to you? Carter does ent. He knows the kind of man he is. Zend is worried about what happened, what Luna's been through, and what RJ's going to go through when he finds out what went down. At the sand house, Luna explains to RJ how she took Poppy's special mints without knowing the night of Eric's marriage. RJ asks her to tell him what happened to her that night. Please! Luna cries that if she has just stayed with him at Eric's that night, none of this would be passing. She'd give anything not to hurt him. The study of betraying him kills her, but that's exactly what happened. I betrayed you that night. Luna harangues that the mints did commodity to her. She did and mean it. RJ asks her to calm down, she's not making any sense. Luna says when she left the party, she was so tired and so thirsty she happed to see water in one of the goose houses, so she went outside to drink it. I must have laid down in the bed because I was so exhausted. RJ asks if that's all she remembers. Luna says the coming thing she remembers is RJ coming into the room and her saying she'd been staying for him. In the design office, Zen tells Carter that he see and say anything about this to anyone. Carter wa ain't, but RJ deserves to know. Zen says Luna is telling him the whole story right now. This has been tearing her piecemeal. I just hope that RJ can understand. Carter hates that this happened. Zen does too. Luna is a sweet person, who no way would have cheated if not for her mama's mints. Carter can only imagine the guilt Poppy is feeling. Zen thinks it was reckless and reckless. Carter asks what about him? Zen no way would have done what he did had he known. It no way passed to him that Luna might have been on commodity. Carter asks, what about taking responsibility? RJ is his kinsman, which should have been enough for him to pump the thickets. Carter backs off. He does not need a lecture from him. He just hates this for all of them. Zend worries that Luna's world is about to blow sky high. 
Carter muses, you really do watch about her, do ain't you? In the sand house, RJ recaps that Juan accidentally took her mama's medicines and stumbled into one of the goose houses. He asks, whose it was? I was not there, but someone was, right? Luna cries and nods. RJ demand, who was it? Luna, answer me. I need to know. Luna heartbreaks, it was Zend. I spent the night with Zend. RJ rolls. Luna harangues that she had no idea she was with Zend. It was end until the coming morning that she realized what had happened. RJ asks her to stop. My kinsman you too Luna is so sorry and reaches for RJ's hands, please. RJ pulls back. At Ayal Giardino, Deacon is still gaping at Sheila and Sugar's dispatches when Steffi and Finn walk in. He suppositions Finn told Steffi what he said. Steffi does and want to hear it. You re wrong. Do wrong. I killed Sheila. Deacon told her what she thinks happened. Steffi says she knows she killed Sheila, she saw her face. Cleric saw her too. He pulled back the distance and it was surely Sheila, but when the distance slipped, he saw ten toes. I surely saw ten toes. Finn says, Cleric, you were emotional. Deacon asks if they want him to just drop this. That's exactly what Steffi wants him to do. Sheila got exactly what she merited. Now you need to stop this. You need to stop spreading these falsehoods, okay? I do ain't want to suppose about Sheila presently, I do ain't want to talk about her presently. She's out of our lives ever. Do you hear me? Ever.